minus 20 seconds. Let's just keep honest people honest. Marie Teresa. Daddy is RV. Elena Sandovici. Lauren Luna. Rodney D. Butler. Hugo Perez. Amy Cummins. Flux the artist. Lex Simone. Brandy Unz. Amy Malkin. Jean Barron. Teresa L. Staley. And Monique LaRue. side of the building. Artists would be lined up all the way down to the street sometimes. It is wild. Just to get in for an opportunity to show our artwork and do our first show. December 2nd of 2017. I finally tried to have my shot at Pancakes and Booze myself. Got accepted and everything. That night, I sold five pieces and I was just blown away by that. Like, that's a big deal when you're first doing art. But it was in the line standing outside that I saw some art that just caught my eye and I had to talk to the young man who was behind it. So once we got inside, I made my way over to him and introduced myself and we started talking. And to this day, we're still friends and I can't wait to tell you guys all about him. His artwork was just so different. It was like folk art and mixed media. And he did these things where he redid amps and it was just so much to take in. It was just so beautiful. Even his abstract work, which is new and recent for him. Can you introduce yourself? I'm Daddy Hizarvi, mixed media artist. Been living and working here in Houston, Texas for the past seven years. Originally, I am from Chatania, Louisiana, a very small town next to Lafayette, Louisiana. Uh, been doing art for a long time, pretty much my whole life. There you go. All right. So the next question is, what do you like about the Houston art scene? So why, as being an artist here and participating in the community, what about this community? as an artist and the other artists in the art community do you love that's in Houston? What I fell in love with it first was the camaraderie um, and how the underground scene plays a big part and, and the relationships being built between a lot of growing and emerging artists. Um, so when I got my, my start here just somebody inviting me to um, a small event a few other artists put on uh, and that when I saw there you know it was just a bunch of artists getting together and, and doing it no matter what level or they were on at the time so I appreciate it. that's what made me fall in love with it and then as I started to grow and do more events and do more things in the underground I started to see the same people. You know, we started to become friends. We started to work together. You know, I'm still friends with a lot of those people to this day. Where'd you get your first art start in Houston? So, like, you just tell us, you know, about your first show or that first moment here in Houston where you like, you know what, I'm gonna start doing more here in Houston as an artist because now I feel like I gotta start. Yeah. So my first show started. Uh, it's to a group of two girls, Abiola and Katrina. They had their own tiny event called Fame, which 
was an acronym um, for like all things with art, you know, uh, fashion, art, music, entertainment, something like that. Uh, okay. So they put that, they compiled that all together and they brought different artists in. So when I initially uh, got introduced to them, I was just a guest. Uh, a friend invited me uh, to show me because I had been talking about wanting to do stuff and getting to the art scene which is why I moved here. And getting introduced to them the first time I, I spoke with an artist that was there and she had told me that she had just sold two pieces. And I, and at the time, you know, I don't, I'm not sure how much she sold it for, but the fact that she sold it, it was just blowing my mind. Like, I could sell something. Right. I can actually feel like a real artist selling and working. Uh, so I immediately wanted to, to connect with them and I submitted for the next show, which was a few months after, and they allowed me to be part of it. How does Thaddeus feel about being an artist during COVID-19 and the current events? And the current events just aren't COVID-19. Yeah. Everything that has happened up <laughs> until this moment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, definitely at the beginning of this year, I had so much hope and, and I had prepared myself all of 2019 to gather all the success I was about to endure for 2020 and you know I even this we can start before all the major events for me um, I'm just getting into a program uh, where I, it's supposed to help me push me for them to my career and I'm coming in with this head that I'm just the best and and I I'm just a badass artist and I just know everything uh, the type of artist I want to be the direction I've been because I've been hustling for the past seven years and I know I'm stuck in my ways and I'm, I'm this type of artist we get hit with the pandemic during the pandemic, you know, in the beginning, it's frantic. It's like, we have all these plans. We're not sure if the world's going to shut down. We're not sure if the program's going to shut down. We don't know if we can even go back to work. And we just having all these thoughts of like, damn, I just, you know, this was about to be my year, you know, but I'm also struggling to figure out whether, you know, art is really... Is I'm really questioning, am I a badass artist? Am I, you know, can I endure or can, do I have what it takes to be an artist? Uh, Especially so, right now. Yeah, you know, and this is me struggling with this already before COVID. So during COVID, and during quarantine time, especially those first three months, I think it, it caused me to really reflect more on myself. What you gonna do once it's over? You know, are you gonna continue this art thing? Or are you gonna go out there and get a real job? Because you don't want to be stuck in another situation where you don't know how you're gonna pay for your bills because you haven't been saving anything. Or, you know, I've been doing this mainstream hustling, being trying to be an artist for the past year and a half. You know, and I've been kind of struggling. There until up until this point, so co quarantine time is what made me reflect on myself a lot. Is what do you think the world needs more of in this time? I think the world definitely needs a lot of empathy, love. I feel like we should put ourselves in each other's shoes. A little bit try to have a better understanding of what we all going through but also what each individual group are you know is going through right now uh, each part of the world each continent each state just kind of we just should just have some empathy just be nice see each other <laughs> as human beings and not as you know other targets are punching bags, you know, you know, just have some love and stop letting the hate take over, because we see it, uh, we see it 
every day and we still kind of feed into it. Even with ourselves, you know, I can be guilty of it sometimes with myself, but I just feel like you need to break those those barriers and you know, change the cycle. Get to a better place. And care about each other a little bit more. To the empathy. The next question is the reverse of that. How do you, what do you think we, we need less of right now? I think we need less of what the media is trying to push to us. Less uh, narratives and more about the truth and, and not just what they want to show us. Hey, if they gonna show us, then it shows everything. We need to, we need to know the good and the bad. You know, we know we need to know the names. We need to know uh, where they from, what's going on, who's who's putting things together. We, they just saying or showing things that's flatly on the surface, and it's giving all of us a bad perception of of each individual group or a bad perception of COVID or you know. Black, Black Lives Matter movement, uh, white supremacy, Donald Trump, all these these topics we have, they're only telling the surface. You know, and they're, they're stirring up the hate right now. And, and it, it feeds in from national media to Facebook and why it's personally right there in our face all day, every day. And we're just angry and mad at things all the time because of that's that's what we're, we're we're feeding into our brains, and that's what that's the all media they show is us. doing. Yeah, and it's just so much. And then we share so much. So after we watch this, all we want to do is talk about it and share it on the internet. And you know, so we're getting all these negative opinions about things. But how can you blame it when all we see is negative um, things in, in, in society? And, and that's what they're portraying all the time. But they're not giving us all the facts about all that negativity. They're telling us this is bad, but not telling us everything. So we can make an informed decision about how to feel about it. We're just feeling it because that's what they're telling us to feel about it. What, what is your message to the world? My message to, to the world is you have to love yourself have to know yourself and we can't go through life always trying to make decisions to make other people happy that we have to be our first part so whatever it is is listening or watching that you have to be your first party and then you have to be bold about who you are not everything the world tells us or has told you your whole life is the truth. And it's okay to form your own opinions about it. And especially when it comes to yourself. So if it's things that we're doing in life and other people is telling us it's bad or it's disgusting or all these other adjectives and it's not hurting anybody and it's not hurting you so we have to own those things, claim those things, and just be okay with that and be okay with living with, with that within ourselves. So after meeting Thaddeus and just having so much more confidence, even did a few projects with him, I decided to apply for a mentorship program and got accepted. Later on, he ended up getting accepted into the same program, too. And because of that program, the Escapist Mentorship Program, I was able to meet this next artist that I can't wait to tell you about. Thank <laughs> you.